the opening remarks were supposed to have been uh, read out by Dean Payton, the director of the Western Approaches Museum. Unfortunately, he's not very well this morning, so I'm, I'm his deputy now. Captain Johnny Walker, CB, DSO, three bars. His first name is given him as Frederick. Nobody knew this. And he was a Royal Naval officer noted for his exploits during the Second World War. Walker was the most su successful anti-submarine warfare commander <coughs> during the Battle of the Atlantic and was known more popularly as Johnny Walker for the Johnny Walker brand of whiskey, of course. Uh, he was born in Plymouth, the son of Frederick and uh, Lucy Sully, uh, and he joined the Royal Navy as a cadet in 1909. He was educated at the Royal Naval College at Osborne. And he first and uh, first serving on the battleship Ajax as a midshipman. As a mid as sub lieutenant, he went on to join the destroyers in 1916 and 1917. Following the end of the First World War, he joined the Queen Elizabeth battleship. When the Second World War began in 1939, Walker's career seemed at an end. Still a commander, he would have been passed over promotion. However, due to the commencement of war, and in 1940 was appointed as Operations Staff Officer to Vice Admiral Sir Bertram Ramsey. Even so, he was still not given a command despite expertise in submarine warfare anti-submarine warfare, sorry, and would no doubt be indispensable in the Battle of the Atlantic. He received his first command in October 1941, taking control of the 36th Escort Group, commanding from the Bitten class Sloop Stork. The Escort Group comprised two sloops and six corvettes and was based in Liverpool the home of the Western Approaches Command. Initially, the group was primarily used to escort convoys to and from Gibraltar. And then it talks about his, uh, the U-boat war, where he was a great success. His funeral service took place at the Liverpool Anglican Cathedral, full naval honours, being attended by about a thousand people. <coughs> A naval procession followed escorting the body through the streets of the city to the docks, where it was embarked aboard the destroyer Hesperus for a burial at sea. As Walker's group had already steamed out for combat duty, most of the naval personnel who manned the funeral procession were from the Royal Canadian Navy. And uh, he, he, was, uh, he had a CB, a DSO and a DSC. And uh, I now hand you on to uh, Commanding Officer of HMS Eaglet, Commander Morning. Barnes. We're here to remember the life and service of Captain Frederick Johnny Walker, CB, DSO and three bars, Royal Navy, who, 78 years after he crossed the bar, continues to inspire those who followed him in the naval and wider maritime service. At HMS Eaglet, the ship's company is formed into three divisions, Hobo Horton, Noble and Walker. Captain's Walker. Captain Walker's portrait is displayed in the wardroom and we have named our two rigid inflatable boats, Stork and Starling, as a small way of keeping alive his memory as we train the men and women of the Royal Naval Reserve in the waters of the River Mersey he knew so well. I recently attended a course with my regular Royal Navy peers and during one stand easy, Captain Walker became the topic of conversation. His skill as a submarine hunter, the tactics he developed which the Royal Navy uses to this day and his strength as a great leader. This was not the forced conversation of students who'd attended a lecture on a historical figure with little modern day relevance but the enthusiastic dialogue of serving naval officers who recognised the greatness of someone who'd gone before them and who continued to hold him as a role model. Captain Walker's death was felt keenly in Liverpool and in Bootle and across the seafaring community. His funeral in Liverpool Cathedral was a solemn and moving affair. 
And now we will hear the words spoken at the funeral by Admiral Sir Max Horton. The following words were spoken at the funeral of Captain Walker in Liverpool Cathedral on the 12th of July 1944. In the day when the waters had well nigh overwhelmed us, our brother, apprehending the creative power in man, set himself the task to conquer the malice of the enemy. In our hour of need, he was a doughty protector of them that sailed the seas on our behalf. His heart and mind extended and expanded to the utmost tiring of the body, even until death, that he might discover and operate the means for saving our ships from the treacherous foe. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the growing down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Thanks very much for everyone coming. We've got a, a good crowd of people. Maybe this is due to the Walker family. <laughs> Thank you very much for attending.